People don't realize it, but password protection holds a pretty big part of our daily lives. Without it, there would be no such thing as a secure bank account, email, or practically any other online service. But how does it actually work? So today, let's talk about how your passwords are hashed, stored, and then hacked. Most people think that the most secure way to store a password is with encryption. Now, encryption is a popular method, but it's been shown to be ineffective nowadays. This is because encryption is turning some characters into a different form based on a certain method. For example, the easiest method that you could think of is a reverse alphabet method, or at bash cipher. This would work just as you would think. Now, this form of encryption is great because any hacker who sees this random garbage isn't going to be able to figure out what the deciphered form is. However, if they have the encryption key, then they could very well turn everything back. This is what makes encryption vulnerable. A hacker who's already in the system could find both the ciphered form and the encryption key to decipher everything and get back your original password. For that reason, programmers have turned to hashing. Now, hashing is an operational function. Now, this may sound less secure to you, but listen to this. There are thousands of these operations, one right after another. Addition, subtraction, mod, squaring, rooting, any operation possible. So if both hashing and encryption store your password in a secure way, what are the key differences? For starters, encryption is one-to-one -one reversible. So if you enter in a word password to the encryption, there's only a single blip that matches it out on the other side. For example, our at bash cipher. Password becomes this jumbled mess. Now notice how you cannot enter anything except for the word password to get that same mess out. That's the key. Also, encryption is reversible, so you get the encryption key and the hacker will have a party. Hashing is not one-to-one. -one. After all, it's math. Say you had a hash function where every number added together, and there are 128 numbers. It's nearly impossible to figure out what the beginning sequence of numbers was. For example, say you had the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4. The answer would be 10. However, 10 could also be the answer to 1117 or 1009. Now this brings up the problem with hashing. There is a lot of collisions. All of these combinations would work and that would lead to a password that really has 5 or 10 passwords that could all technically work if they added up or did the math in the right way. To reduce this issue, hashing happens with a lot of different operations such as add, subtract, divide, square root, multiply. Anything possible, it'll do. And more than that, it'll run the answer to that thousand operation hash back into itself to further scramble the beginning sequence. This means that hashing is pretty darn secure, but to make it even more secure, things called salts are used. Salts are extra strings that tag onto the password before it's hashed. So if you have a password like this, then the salt would be added on at the end. Then the total would be sent into the hasher. This is currently what's in use by the most advanced security systems. Now, there are only a few hash functions ever made that actually work as the world's best. That might be a shock to you because you might think, well, if everyone's using the same hash software and it's so popular that hackers know the hash, then aren't we susceptible? No, because the whole point of a hash is that even if you saw every step along the way, there would be too many steps and it would be impossible to connect the end result to the entered password in the beginning. This is why hashing is only susceptible to brute force attacks. So all a hacker would be able to do is to hack into some company and steal all the hashed forms of their passwords because remember, no one stores the unhashed versions of the passwords unless you have the most archaic security system like Sony. Then the hacker would have to know what hash system the company would be using. There are only like five recent reputable ones ever created, the last one being made in like 2013. Remember, it's really hard to make these hash programs because they're designed for the least amount of collisions and have to be mathematically proven to have a zero or infinitely close to zero chance of having two different inputs equal the same output. So let's say the hacker assumes the company uses the most recent one. He has a copy of this hash program because it's published all over the internet. Now our hacker, all he can do is try random inputs into the hash and see if anything, anything at all, matches the data he has. This is called a brute force attack, and as you might guess, it's really slow. It would take decades, probably even longer, to collect a full list of everyone's password who has a Yahoo account with even the fastest of computers. Now this is what makes hashing so ideal. It isn't perfect, but it can be mathematically proven to be as close to perfect as can be. Anyways, please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. I know I took a little bit longer to make this video, but I'm trying to make my videos of a higher quality, like intellectually. This was a pretty hard subject that I had to do a lot of research on, so I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys later.